the point of this is um, telling you how to get faster at doing things, which is perfectly reasonable, while doing everything you should. So this isn't about getting to be really, really fast and be able to do things as fast as you can. I, I did some Googling a few weeks ago just to see if there are any other people who are saying similar things that might be useful to look at. And I found an American guy who apparently sees about 40 people a day, and he's very proud of the fact that it only takes him about 10 minutes to provide an examination. And I think that's probably leaning too far one way. I think he's probably cutting corners and bashing them through just to do them as fast as I can. I'm sure he makes loads of money and is very happy with his Porsche and his big house, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to say how you can do it appropriately in a reasonable length of time. The title was from two hours to 20 minutes. How can you get your basic eye examination down to a reasonable length of time? There are three things when you break this down to how do you get down to a reasonable length of time? There's a bit of practice, some things you just have to do repeatedly to get good at them, fair enough. There's a bit of efficiency in there. We can do things better and have good methods of doing things, which will certainly save you some time. And I think a big portion of this is decision making, which we'll probably spend more of the time in this session on than the other two bits. So what about practicing? As I said, I don't think there are really any shortcuts. Sometimes you just have to do things over and over again to get good at it. And probably something like head-mounted biomicroscopy is a good example of that. The first time you do that, when you're doing it at the moment, you're going to be pretty slow and you're going to get a pretty bad view of what you're looking at. But with a bit of practice, it just becomes second nature. These things become much more straightforward and it takes you half the time to do a much better level of examination. And repetition is key. There's no shortcuts to that. Just keep practicing these things. You maybe do things on patients that they didn't perhaps need a test. So we're, we're looking at, at the moment, practicing things rather than doing exactly the most efficient examination you can. You might do an extra test just to have some more practice at it, just to, as you're going along. It's been one of my kind of personal crusades, I suppose, for the last few years of, of, of having kind of a sanity check in what you're doing. Does what I'm doing make sense? And especially if we think of something as basic as a refraction. If I'm doing a particular thing, if I'm adding a lens to a patient's prescription, does it make sense from what they've just told me? And because of that answer, where do I go next? So you go on to the next stage or maybe your flowchart loops back around and you ask the same question again to refine your result. Probably the most important thing is you've got all this information in front of you. What does that mean you do next? What does that mean for the patient? And there are probably three things really, if we think of you know, top line things you can do with the patient after you've examined them. You can give them a pair of glasses or different glasses. You can treat the condition they've got, or you can refer them to somebody else who can treat a condition that you've come across. If you don't know what's wrong with them, and that can happen sometimes, we all get iffy things and think this is a bit strange. The main decision you have to make is how quickly does somebody else have to see them? Is this an important thing that should be seen now? Or is it something that can go in a routine referral and they'll see them in however many months it is in your local area for somebody to be seen by someone else. Doing the test a lot of time isn't that complicated. You get the information out of the patient at the end. It's about using that information appropriately to make a decision which is the right decision for the patient. And the bit that's difficult, I think, particularly when you're starting out, is doing that quickly. You've not seen enough funny optic nerves, you've not seen enough funny things to really know what something means. So it's, it's about thinking through what you've got at the end and thinking, does this make sense from their symptoms, from the test results I've got, and then what am I going to do with it? So this is my routine essentially then, and I had a think of this on paper and I had a look at it just the other day when I was at work thinking, have I missed anything here? Because it does seem kind of short, but this is just kind of gross headline things of what I would do when I'm looking through you know, a basic examination. So you'll start with your history, obviously makes sense. Sit the patient down and let's talk about why you're here, what we're looking for. Is there anything in your family history that we need to know about? And then that will shape the rest of your examination, as I said a minute ago. And then the first thing I would always do is measure what they can see at the moment. And there's a couple of good reasons for that. One is because it's useful to know. It helps you decide how healthy their eyes are, how good their specs are at the moment. Uh, and also, legally, it's quite a useful thing to have. If you've done a few invasive tests and then the patient says, I can't see, it's quite hard to defend that if you didn't know what they could see beforehand. So you've probably been told that before. It's really useful to have a measure of their vision right at the beginning so you can say, but look, they're still 6'5". They were 6'5 at the end. They were 6'5 at the beginning wasn't anything to do with me. Really just practice would be the main thing, would be the, the first thing they can do, and then about being efficient. So again, thinking like a flowchart, thinking about your routine examination, does it make sense, the order I do things, and the way that I'm doing things. And then the most important thing, your clinical decision making, having that sanity check at the end to say, does that make sense with all the information I have? Have I made the right decision or have I missed something? I say a lot of these things are just down to practice. You're not going to be as quick in a couple of months time as you're going to be in nine months time just by the time you've done things you've got slick with your cross sills you've got better at putting lenses out of trial frames all that sort of thing comes with practice i'm rubbish at that nowadays i've got a for opta a digital one's brilliant i've had it for a decade now so i can refract somebody without looking at the buttons they're good but occasionally i have to get my trial frame out to do somebody in a wheelchair or something like that and I, i'm not quick anymore at all i have to kind of 
fiddle around to get the lenses in, but when you're doing it all the time, you get good at it, you get good strong shoulders from keeping your arms up all day, and these things come with just a bit of practice. A lot of this is about efficiency, as I say, do the right things on the right people at the right time, think about the, the order you're doing things in, get it down to a nice neat pattern. It might be as silly as, and it was my um, pre-read supervisor had this, that he said the light switch was on the other side of the room. So I got into the habit of doing this, then that, because it saved me having to go over and turn the lights on and come back down again. It wasted me 20 seconds each time. So I started doing it in this particular order. And that would be up to what your environment is like. But you might find that something works better in a certain order because you don't have to fiddle around to rearrange the furniture. And then the most important thing, and probably the difficult kind of soft skill to learn, is decision making. But that's something that comes with time, with practice, with looking at hundreds of optic nerve heads. You get used to seeing the slightly funny, unusual ones and the diseased ones, and you'll get better at working out what's what and what you have to do about it. But just remember, if you're thinking about these things, make sure you've done all the tests you need to do to rule out a problem before you make the decision with that information, rather than making a decision on half the information. Um, you want to have enough that you can say, yep, this is this and not this because they've got full fields or no tobacco dust or nothing unusual in the periphery, those sorts of things. Or if I was to summarize it in a couple of words, do the right tests in a sensible order and use that information to make a sensible decision at the end of your examination.